All right, everyone, at this point, so this is week two of our class. Last week was setting up some foundational things, concepts and such. Today we're going to set up one more foundational thing and then get going. Uh, we're going to go over 0 to 60 because we need to create a, a base project, uh, which will then be our, our template of sorts for all future projects. That's what's in store for today. So all you needed to do was either set up your real device or your virtual device. I've got them both so you can see both my screens. And again, it looks really easy when I do it, but that's because I've been doing it for years. And you've only been doing it for maybe one week. So you need, uh, you need more uh, practice, uh, of course. And then um, I've got these running here. I'm going to look at sheet number five. That's uh, one of the spots where we ended up last time, I believe. So I'll give you an overview of what sheet five is, and then we'll actually do it. On sheet 5, I've got my work, Cordova workflow part 1. Sheet 6 is part 2. So after, all we've, after we've got everything all set up, we need to create a basic app. This is a little bit of reiteration of what we did previously, but this time, what we will do here, we will keep. We haven't really kept anything that we did previously, but now we're going to keep this. So if you have not plugged in your USB drive to save this work, <coughs> you should do so. In general, what we're going to do, and there's a little misspelling here, but it shouldn't throw you off, a little typo on line 3 and 4. On line 3, I say, decide where you'll save your Cordova projects. When you open Node, Command Prompt, you'll probably be in the User folder. You're going to need to create a folder for your Cordova, Cordova projects. And I have here the command mkdir, make directory apps. Now my misspelling is that on the next line, then I say CD Cordova apps. Whoops. I call the folder apps in the line 3, and I'm saying go into Cordova apps. So obviously that will not work. So the misspelling is that it should just be called apps. That's a folder called apps, not Cordova apps. My mistake. I'm going to fix that and give you a new version of it. But the concept is we're going to create a folder to hold our project for this class, any future projects. We can do it either in the command prompt or we can do it in Windows Explorer. We'll do it in the command prompt just to follow along here. We'll create a basic project like we did last time. We're going to add all plugins like we did last time. But then the big difference that we'll do now is that then we'll talk about something called the config.xml file, a very important file that controls the functionality of your project. So let me get started here. Uh, I've got my, my flash drive plugged in. Every computer is different. Sometimes the flash drive is on drive D. Sometimes it's on E or F or G or whatever. The way you find that out is if you open computer window, my Kingston flash drive is on F. Hopefully yours is on F also. If you don't know what yours is, I'm going to assume it's F. Maybe not, because I've got a bunch of disks. Now that I know that I'm on drive F, let's go to the Start menu. In the Start uh, search here, you're going to search for Node. You should get a couple of results. The one you want is Node Command Prompt. Node.js, I think it does the same thing, but I haven't really looked at it enough. I'm always just going to the Node.js Command Prompt. So search that in your start menu and launch node.js command prompt. We get the command prompt there. I'm going to maximize it to give me more space. <clears throat> As I said, I'm going to uh, save my work now on my flash drive. Right now, in the command prompt, it tells me I'm on the C drive, the main hard drive. C colon backslash users backslash instructor. Yours is C colon backslash users backslash lab. I want to switch to my flash drive, which I determined a moment ago is on drive F. To switch to that drive F, you just type the, the, the drive letter, F colon enter. Now I'm on drive F. Command prompt tells me F backslash. To confirm, DIR, there's this stuff on my flash drive. All right, I'm on this. I'm on my flash drive. In my instructions, I'm saying, let's create a folder to store all of our apps. We can obviously do it in Windows Explorer, right-click new folder. We're in command prompt. So, mkdir, make directory. This is on my instruction number three, sheet five. Make a directory, space, any directory we want, any name, capital letters, spaces, whatever we want. But since we're going to be typing this, 
why don't we make it easier on ourselves? We're going to make a brand new folder called apps. And yes, I have a folder for this class, but I'm not going to type that. Obviously, I can use the tab trick, which I'll remind you of in a bit. But I'm just making a very quick, simple folder called apps on my flash drive so I can get to it as soon as possible through the command prompt. Press enter. You get no feedback really, except what's your next command? DIR to confirm. I've got a brand new folder. Directory called apps. I want to change to that directory. CD space apps. Enter. And now I'm in, inside the apps folder on the flash drive. Okay, next instruction here. That was number four. Number five. We're going to type the Cordova create command, and this time it's going to be your real app. Um, so we're going to use your name and such where applicable. Uh, but we can change this if we mistype it. So Cordova space create space the name of the folder of our app which we will just call for the moment basic because this is going to be like our template to create subsequent apps so obviously we could call it a template more spelling never mind space we need a package name or an ID this um, is the reversed um, web address that identifies your app from everyone else's on the app store so com dot if you've already got a website you can use your website if you don't we're just gonna make this up com dot your last name not mine your last name dot the name of this app which is basic so do you see the logic here reading from right to left this is the basic app from campus.com that's why that separates your app from everyone else's. I can make an app called Calculator and sorted 500 other developers. But there's only one app in the whole app store called calculator.campos.com, calculator.smith.com, calculator.amazingapps.org. That's what keeps it separate from everyone else's app. Space. Here we are then uh, typing the name that appears below the icon in a human readable way. And in order to do that, we need quotes. Open quote, end quote. We can back up. And this is just the basic app. You can, of course, edit this later if you misspell it or whatever. So Cordova, create basic app folder, com.yourlastname.basic, and then in quotes, basic app. Enter. Creating a new Cordova project. Next command. We need to go into that brand new basic folder to then add the different platforms, the different operating systems. So CD basic. I just created a folder called basic, so I can see the basic. The command prompt tells me I'm in the basic folder, in the apps folder, on my F drive. Now on line 6, Cordova platform add Android. Enter. This is going to give you more feedback than the other commands. Once we do this today, we're not going to need to do this in subsequent days, unless we want to create another brand new, out-of-the-box Android app. We're not going to, to need to do that because if we set this up as our basic app, we can just simply, in Windows Explorer, copy the folder, and you've got a new app. Changing a few things, of course. But we can just copy the whole folder, and it's a brand new app. We don't have to run through the whole code of a create, code of a platform add, code of a plugins add. It's just going to be easily copyable. So get some feedback, installing, whatever, done. <clears throat> 
Next, I want to add those 18 plugins. I've got the, the shortcut to do that in the network folder. If you don't have a copy of it, you might want to get a copy. Go to the network folder. Go to our class folder. And then at the very end, we've got Cordova plugins all dot text. You can kind of copy and paste from my PDF, although the PDF cuts off the line, unfortunately. This text file that is here has it as one long line, which is what we want. So that whole line, you need to select the whole thing. So right-click, select all. Right-click, copy. And then in the command prompt, control V does not work. That kind of paste shortcut does not work. So right-click copy from the notepad file. And then in, in, uh, in um, command prompt, right-click, paste. Control V does not work. So now that's going to do all the plugins for us. Cordova, plugin, add. device, network, motion, media, localization, all of them. In the end, we won't need them all, but it's good for our basic app to have them all so that when we start a brand new project that needs the camera, it's ready. And then we can take away the plugins we don't need at the end when we're ready to actually, you know, compile for the devices, output to the devices. That's going to take a quick moment. Anyone need a little help at this point? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I'm not sure if I can do some kind of map already. If I try to make it work on the app, I don't What I would do if, you're, if you've got an app you're already working on, make a copy of that folder so that you have an original one just in case something goes wrong. And then on that copy, try this. And if it all works, good. If it doesn't, then we've got the original one to go back to without the changes. So I'm going to wait for that. Anyone need a little help? Any questions so far? Again, we only need to do this one time, so it might be slow the first time, but afterwards it will be fast. No 
Yeah. 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 Ye
so that all of this will go faster next time. Notice that feedback. That's up to date. That's up to date. That's not up to date. Once we do it once here, and it'll tell us how long it takes in a moment, next time we do this, it'll go much faster because the file, the project has been prepared up to this point. And again, it's going to take a moment the first time. After that, it'll go much faster. Did anyone else kind of explore this at home over the weekend? Anyone work with it? Nope. Okay, minus 10 points for everyone. You want to try this at home once in a while so that you can keep practicing. Yeah, with a sheet missing on number two on the ABT. Okay. Oh, 
All right, everyone. So on mine, it says it took two minutes and 0 0.91 seconds. Subsequent builds or subsequent running or emulating will go faster because all of these files will now be up to date. That's one of the reasons to do this build at this point. So number nine, with this basic app set up, you can now create copies of this project uh, to create more projects. So if I take a quick look on my on a, on a Windows Explorer window, if I open my flash drive in Windows Explorer and open apps, I've got a project in there called a folder called Basic. And just taking a quick look, that is about uh, 26 and a half megabytes. On, on the disk, even though I haven't done anything yet. This is still that very basic shell with that little Android, uh, with that little Cordova mascot. So don't do this, but if I were to right click and copy that basic folder and then paste it, I would have a brand new app that's all set up with all of the Android code, with all of the plugins. It's already been built once, and then I can just go forward. Obviously, that other app will also be called Basic even if I change the folder name, because the folder name doesn't have anything to do with what's inside of the project, technically. So simply copying it will work, but it will, they will all have a project name of basic. So continuing my handout here on the second part, edit the config file. Let's look at that. On this, we will jump out of the command prompt, so leave the command prompt alone for a moment. Let's go and open a, a Windows Explorer window here and open that basic folder. Uh, we did not get to it last time, I believe. We have config.xml. You want to right-click config.xml, edit with notepad. So in your app, in your basic folder project, which is in your apps folder on your flash drive, you've got the config file, which is at the root. <coughs> It's at the highest level above everything. Let's go ahead and edit it in Notepad and see what's in that. Twenty-six lines, twenty-six very important lines, breaking it down line by line. Line one, we've got the docu document type declaration, which tells us this is XML. This looks very familiar to HTML. HTML is um, a specification for sort of writing content that is self-described. That's the high-level way of thinking about it, but basically it's making up your own tags. In HTML, we have the HTML tag, we have the P tag, we have the H1 tag. Those have been defined. If we want to make up our brand new tag called widget, there's no such thing as widget, perhaps, in the HTML language. If we want to make up a tag called access, there's no such thing as the access tag in HTML, but we can make that up in XML. And then what this, is, what this file then is used for is that something else processes it to do something with it. So XML is sort of like a catch-all, platform agnostic language, scripting language, or markup language, like HTML, but it means something to certain software. So this means something to our app. This is not valid HTML, but it's valid for our apps. It's got it's HTML version 1, UTF-8. We've got a tag called widget that starts on line 2 and basically encompasses everything. Slash widget. There's no such thing as the widget tag in HTML, but there is in our project. Then we've got, after that, the name tag name slash name. That's the name that appears below the icon. When we typed Cordova create basic blah 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 basic app, that's what, where we typed it. So if you mistyped it in the command prompt, you can edit it here. And when you make a copy of this folder called my SDCE, which we'll do later, this is where we would go to change the name that's below the icon. Easy. Description the built-in one. We never wrote this, but look what's written for us. A sample Apache Cordova app that responds to the device-ready event. So that's just basic right there. What we're doing is we're going to set this up. Uh, we're going to change the description. Notice description slash description. Let's delete that existent 
um, description. And we're just going to write something very basic for ourselves here, which is that our basic, or we'll call it our template app with all plugins active and Android and with Android platform. Doesn't matter what we write here. So I'm telling myself this is the template app. It has all the plugins and it specifically has the Android platform ready to go. Author. This is the author tag and it has parameters. So, sort of like when we had the A tag for links and we had the href parameter and all of that, we've got author, author. So, XML, one of the things about it is it's supposed to just make sense by looking at it. That's what, it, that's what I said about self referential, self, self describing. That the tags themselves should tell you what they do, even if you've never kind of seen this file. So, author email, some email address, href, some website, and then the text. Who is this author? The Apache Cordova team. On my handout here, at a certain point, um, I'm saying, well, we're going to put in our particular information. You can make this up if you want, but don't leave the default. Email. You can put in your email, you can make a real one, whatever. Website. Again, you can make it up. Most likely, you're going to use the one that we have online too, yourlastname.com. And then here, you can make up an amazing name for your hot app uh, development team. Whatever. Just put in whatever. If you really are uh, a company and that sort of thing, put it in. If not, if you're just thinking about this, make it up and then later on you can change it. All right now you're an app developer. <laughs> Act like it. Choose a cool name. Make sure you leave out some um, some some uh, some uh, vowels like the hot companies do nowadays. So before we go further. Uh, we're, we're editing what, this, what the basics of this project are going to be on my instructions here. Uh, edit the config file number two. This is um, completely optional, but notice there is the widget tag, and then it's got a property um, or parameter version. Our current app then if someone were to view it on their device or in the App Store, it would say this is version 0.01. .01. We can write anything we want here. And I have a suggestion in my notes here that you can ignore if you want. I won't take it bad. You can simply write version 1.0. Great. That's acceptable. You can write anything you want here. But in my notes, I'm saying this might be useful to you. We can write one point and then the date. That's a valid version number as well. You've probably seen this in your software. I'm running Chrome version 37.942678. I'm running Windows 10 version 109.9 .9 whatever. So version numbers don't matter, really, except that they increment somehow. So let's say we we finish our project this month, we publish it and so forth, next month then we've got version 2 because we've added some new features. So then what I would do logically is I would write version 2 and then whatever date, 8, 21, whatever. You see the logic behind that. The big number in front of the dot is going to be my main version. And then maybe I'm still running, maybe a month from now or a few days from now, I'm, I. I did publish this, and I'm still running version one, but this is a this is a big update that I that I needed to do for security. So it could be version still one point, and then 2015.07.29. It's whatever system you want to use to keep track of your versions. I'm just suggesting have a big release number and then the date. That way you can have that sort of uh, schema 
for your version numbers. After this quote of the version, add a space, and we need to add something here specifically for Android. Because version number here technically is a string, it could even be words, this can be version alpha, and next month you publish version beta, and next month version gamma. That works, technically. But what we need to do, for specifically for Android, is we need to add one more parameter here that Google and Amazon will be looking for. And if you don't have this, this might cause your app to be rejected. We're going to type Android dash version code capital C on code equals quotes. This one, if you're going to be targeting Android apps, is required. And it's also required to use numbers to use whole numbers. So this one is 1. This is the first version of our project. Let's say I publish this. Someone discovers a vulnerability. I publish a vulnerability. I would go back here and change this to 1.2015.079 and then I would change version code to 2 they might go out of sync and that's okay. Again, that number is pretty much arbitrary in version, but Android version code has to be incremented every time we publish it to the app stores. Even if all you did was to change the color of the background of one screen, it's a new version of the code. So the app stores will expect a new number there. For us, this is what makes sense at this point in time. I'll remind us of this, of course, a little later. But the importance is that this tells the app stores that this is the first version of our app. Jumping down to line 10, content, source equals index.html. That's the line that makes a plain old index file the very first screen of our app. This could be then changed to anything we want. Not necessary, because our project already, from last month, starts off with index.html. When, when uh, Cordova released version 5x, um, security vulnerabilities were addressed. Uh, one of them was to uh, have this uh, whitelist. Uh, so a whitelist is uh, a list of approved entities. And so here's just saying we've got a whitelist. This is version 1. This is approved. This is not approved. We don't need to really change this or, or worry about it. It's something that was added for us uh, that we don't see in older versions of Cordova. This is, what I, this is what I'm saying about if we've got our workflow all set up, it's not a good idea to update your software in the middle because maybe now there's new stuff that you have to learn and deal with and your app is broken. So if you were still working on your project in, in Cordova 4.5, stick with it even though there's 5.1. Stick with it until your project is done and released. Then you've learned what the new stuff is, then upgrade your project. Access origin, I believe that one basically is that we have access to everything within the project. It's got a, a wild card there, an asterisk. These are some cool items here that really only make sense to old timers that have used previous versions of Cordova. Allow intent. Uh, we're saying here, what kinds of things can we load inside of our project? We can write some simple HTML code in our app let's say contact us now with a phone number and that phone number can be active from the person's app they can tap the phone number and it'll call us because we've got on line 15 allow telephone the telephone protocol so if you write a telephone protocol address which I'll show you how to do a little later it's very easy then within your phone within your app you can dial a phone number you can send a text message SMS we can access external HTTP content and external secure HTTP content. We can do a, a very simple trick to send an email through the person's email app. 
without having to program a more complex email system. It's kind of basic, but it's quick and dirty. It gets the job done. Mail to. If you've got any experience in HTML in previous classes, you might know about sending a link uh, or setting up a link to send an email. That will work now within our app. We can set up a, a quick access to a, a map. If we set up a link that is in the geo uh, protocol, ge geographic, it will open up the person's native map on their device. So again, for old timers that are using Cordova, this is great. For those of us that are new, it's still great. You don't know what the old days were like, but the new days are good. This is new stuff also. Platform. Well, that's not new, but what's inside of it? We've got the platform tag, platform slash platform. Another one, platform slash platform. Parameter, name equals Android, name equals iOS. The things that are outside of platform apply to every platform. So if I had added the Android platform to my project, and the iOS platform, and the Windows Phone platform, and the Firefox platform, everything outside of those platforms would apply to all the apps. But some platforms have specific things that only apply to a specific platform. So they're wrapped inside of a platform tag with a proper name attribute. Allow intent href market. We can have a link from within our app, for example, in your about screen that says, if you like this app, you might also like our other app. And then a link directly to the Google Play or Amazon App Store to launch the other app to entice people to download my other app by adding a link with the market protocol that opens a particular market on the device Google Play or Amazon App Store iOS has something similar but their link is a little different it's going to be ITMS and ITMS apps And then the widget ends, the app data ends, and that's it. In my notes here, what I'm saying is, well, we need to add a few things specifically for Android. This is line 7. Well, actually, not specifically for Android. Um, number 7. Before the platform name Android, we're going to add a brand new preference. Right now, we haven't tested it, but remember, the very basic Cordova app gives you the hello world thing, hello Cordova. And when you go horizontal, the thing rotates horizontally. Um, m many times, modern apps don't rotate. Right? You use Instagram, it's always vertical. You use Periscope, it's always vertical. You use Facebook, it's always vertical. Um, I'm going to show you how you can lock it to always be vertical. Maybe your app, you do want horizontality, so you just don't add this line. But I'm going to add it so that it's horizontal just to see how to do it, and you can figure out how to undo it. Let's add a new line, 19, above the platform Android. We're going to add the tag. It's a single tag, so we'll do open close and slash self-closing. So seeing the example, open angle bracket, close angle bracket, slash. And then inside of that, we will write preference. Preference, prefer, preference, space, uh, name, the tag is the preference tag, and it's self-closing. Then it's got an attribute of name equals, quote, end quote, we'll write orientation, capital O, orientation. We're saying, let's deal with the orientation of our app. And because it's outside of the platform, it will apply to Android, iPhone, Windows Phone, everything. Space. Specifically, what we're saying is value equals quotes portrait. So now what we've done is we've locked the orientation of our app. If we were to load up our, up our app and go horizontal, it would not rotate. It would stay vertical, like many modern apps. If you don't want that, don't add it. If you want it to always be horizontal, maybe you've got a game. If you always want it to be horizontal, what do you think you write here? Landscape. Landscape. What else can we write here? Well, if we look it up at the um, 
at the Cordova documentation, it'll tell us. We've got a couple of others that we can do here, but the big ones, of course, are landscape and portrait. If we don't add this line at all, either or. After that line, press Enter. Well, actually here, we need a space there. Make sure you've got a space after your quote, and before the slash, Enter. We will write another preference. So open, close, angle brackets, slash. I'm going to add the space there so that I don't forget it. So a single self-closing tag. Another preference. Prefer. Preference. Am I spelling it right? Preference. Which preference? Name equals. And this one is, uh, you won't really see a difference until we actually have an app. But the default is that once you get to the, for example, on a website, if you, if you load up a, a website on your browser and you scroll all the way to the bottom, eventually you get to the end, and if you keep scrolling up, you get some sort of feedback that you're at the end. Here on my Android, it's getting like this little bulge that appears that I'm at the end. That's telling me there's no more area to scroll. If I go back to the top, and try to scroll higher, I'm getting a little bit of a bulge there too, that it shows there's no more there's no more there. Great for a website, not so good for an app. You don't really see that in apps. So we're gonna say let's deal with that. The name here is capital D disavow. Disallow, sorry, disallow. Disallow over scroll, capital O. and its value is true. Yes, activate the disallow scroll preference. So now on my app, if I get to the very bottom of the app, there will be none of that feedback. What's that? Value. 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 So on Android 5X, the latest version of Android, you get that sort of little bulge. On the older versions, you get a little glow. There used to be a glow on Android 4 and 3, and I guess. There was a glow at the bottom when you reached the bottom. That's the overscroll. Here we're saying, turn that off, because it feels more like a web page rather than an app. What other preferences can we add here? Well, we'll look at the documentation. We've got other things, like we can set a default background color. Uh, what else? What, we've got some other things that we can work with, but let's just say for the moment we've got those two. If you haven't done so yet, you want to save. Do one, one or two more things, then we'll take a break. Um, those preferences are global. They're applied to all platforms. I want to add now a platform specific um, preference. So inside the, the platform of Android, between lines 21 and 23, shouldn't really matter, but I'm going to add it after allow intent market. Add a new line 23. We're going to add another preference. Brand new preference. Notice we keep using the same uh, nomenclature. Preference name value. Preference name value. So we might as well do it again. Preference name equals something. Value equals something. We're going to do this twice. So let's copy that <laughs> to save ourselves a little effort. We're going to add two preferences. It's going to use the exact same format, so we might as well add it twice. Copy and paste. Assuming you spelled it right, of course. And what I want to do here is 
Remember when we were uh, on the first, I believe it was the first day, we used the Android Studio software and we created a basic app there. One of the screens of the Android Studio asks you, what versions of Android would you like to target? So we're doing that now in this config XML file. So we'll go back to number line 23, which is our first preference. And that specific name will be Android dash min M I N S D K capital S D K, but not the rest, just capital S version capital V. We're saying for Android, the minimum version that our that our app will run on is the value ten which is like Android 2.6 or something old. The latest one obviously is 5. So we're targeting like 90 or 95 percent of all Android devices. Yeah, we could target one, but that's not recommended, something so old. We're currently on like 24 or 25. So we're saying the oldest version of Android is 10. And again, remember there's three, there's three ways to to name an Android version. The API version, which is what we're doing there, or the SDK version. There's the, the, the general name like Android 4.0, Android 3.3, Android 5.1, and then the code name. Cupcake, Belgium Waffle, etc. So here we're saying value 10. And then on the next one we'll say Android dash target SDK, capital S, version, capital B, 14. So again, we're targeting sort of the middle of the road. We can access a large variety of devices this way. Our app will be compatible with a large demographic of devices. If I were to target the, the latest version, like 24, then we would be excluding a lot of platforms. So I've found that this is a good balance here. This will run on older devices as well as newer devices. If you don't want to deal with older devices, you can change those values and then their app will their device will not be compatible. They will not be able to download it. They'll be able to see it in the App Store, but then it says your device is not compatible. They can't download it and therefore they can't complain. Let's save that. Again, everything that I just said is on my sheet number five. This was maybe a little boring, pain in the neck, but we need to do this. We're setting this up for our basic app, and then we can start to add, we can start to then make a copy and then create our real app, because this is all ready to go. We'll do one last thing, then we'll take a break, but any questions on this, anything that we did here? Any general questions? Okay, let's go back to command prompt and let's run the last command. Remember the trick to run the last command? Up arrow on the keyboard brings back my last command. It was a while ago, but it was Cordova build. If you did some other command, it'll bring up the last command. So you keep pressing up to go back into your history of commands. Anyway, pull either type it again or press up on the keyboard to bring back Cordova build. My previous build two, took two minutes. Type it and press enter. Remember, it doesn't do in, anything until you enter the command. It's going to look at all your files again. Most of them have not changed, and it'll say up to date to most of them. So, in theory, this should go faster than before. See, all of those are marked as up-to-date. Once that's done, mine is still going, but once, that just, once that's done, you then want to run 
Cordova emulate Android or Cordova run Android. Mine was done in 44 seconds, like I said. If it's done at that point, then we'll go to Cordova emulate Android. Hopefully then it runs on your device and we'll take a break. If it didn't work, I'll, I'll help people in just a moment. So let's take a 10 minute break, 725, we'll be back at 735. If it worked, great. We've got a basic app which will be our template for, for subsequent apps. If it didn't, call me over and we'll figure it out.